Welcome to the podcast. I'm Angela Bobier, and this is Life in the Talbot Settlement, brought to you by Turconnell Heritage Society, operators of Bacchus Page House Museum. In this series, we will do our best to give you a full appreciation of the history of Western Elgin County in southwestern Ontario, from First Nations to the early settlers to the 1950s. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge funding from Turconnell Heritage Society, operators of Bacchus Page House Museum. In October 2021, the Dutton Dunwich Municipal Heritage Committee hosted an outdoor doors open inviting people to visit 10 of our local cemeteries. We were mostly interested in showing unique grave marker designs, symbolism, and iconography versus the stories of the usual prominent citizens. Research and photographs were compiled by volunteers and can be found on the municipality's website. The link is in the podcast show notes along with a map to get to the cemeteries. I suggest you download the brochures to your phone or print them off and take a walk around the cemeteries using this podcast as an audio guide pausing where needed to get to the next marker. Make it a family outing. Special thanks to the 2021 Municipal Heritage Committee members, Delaney Leach, Blair Ferguson, Lawrence Grant, Ron Ross, Angela Bobier, Elaine Brown, who we miss very much, Municipal Planner Tracy Pilon abs Deputy Mayor Mike Hentz, Municipal Staff Member Kate Moreau, and all volunteers who assisted with Doors Open 2021. Enjoy the third and final part in our cemetery series with St. Peter's Anglican Cemetery, St. Stephen's Anglican Cemetery, and Turconnell. If you would enjoy a similar podcast of the remaining Dutton Dunwich or any of the West Elgin cemeteries, we are accepting volunteers such as yourself to put together the research and brochures for future podcasts. St. Peter's Cemetery can be found down the street from Bacchus Page House Museum at 29625 Lakeview Line, south of Wallace Town. Situated on a knoll overlooking Lake Erie, St. Peter's Anglican Cemetery is a portion of 10 acres given by Mary Patterson Story, who settled here in 1809. The cemetery's first burial was in March of 1825. The grave of Leslie, son of Leslie and Lydia Patterson, aged four years and 10 months. John Pierce and Stephen Backus, settlers in 1809 and 1810 respectively, were amongst the first cemetery trustees. In the original part of the cemetery are the remains of Colonel Thomas Talbot, founder of the Talbot Settlement, George Crane, the first settler in Dunwich, and many families who lived on surrounding farms. Colonel Talbot's resting place is a large raised white granite slab on Gray Base, and on it notes, sacred to the memory of the Honorable Thomas Talbot, founder of the Talbot Settlement, who died February 5, 1853, aged 83 years. Let my soul live and it shall praise thee, and let thy judgments help me, from Psalms. Let's look at six of the most interesting markers that we have at St. Peter's Cemetery. First is the Sanders and Dempsey stone. It's a small white granite column on a four-tiered base. It reminds us of a tragic railway accident in St. Thomas that claimed the lives of a mother, aged 28 years, her son, aged five years, two days, and her brother, aged 30 years, on August 7th, 1885, when their buggy was hit by a train. Anna's husband, Frederick, son of an early settler, is also buried here. The rail accident was just five weeks in advance of the one that killed Jumbo the elephant. And let's have a look at the Lily family marker. On one side is a depiction of a pathway leading to an open gate. This symbolizes the pearly gates and passage into heaven. William A. Lilly, a tailor, was born in London, England on April 27, 1819, and died October 25, 1876. His wife Eliza was born July 15, 1819, and died October 27, 1891. This stone was made by Doggett and Company, marble, granite, and stone merchants of St. Thomas, who were in business from 1874 to the 1950s on the northwest corner of Elgin and Center Streets. Now, of course, we have to include a Bacchus and Pierce stone, two of the founding families of Little Ireland, where the museum is. The lilies on this marker in each corner may symbolize innocence, purity, resurrection, and renewal. 
Lilies are highly regenerative and have been described as eternal and incorruptible. John R. Backus was born in 1865 and died 1899. His father, Robert Backus, was born in 1827 and died 1898. Jane Pierce, Robert's wife, and John's mother, was born in 1835 and died in 1914. Now let's look at the tall rally stone. White marble obelisk on cement base. On the west side is a cluster of flowers with the inscription Cristo Duce, loosely translated from Latin to English as Christ the Leader. And I do apologize for my Latin pronunciation. Flowers remind us of the beauty of life. Elizabeth was the wife of the Reverend W.B. Rally. She died February 15th, 1871, aged 47 years. Their second son, Charles, died October 28th, 1871, aged 21 years. The Reverend and his family were at St. Peter's Anglican Church from 1869 to 1871. Now we'll look at George Macbeth's stone. It's a white sandstone slab with a thistle design. Thistles represent endurance, victory, sorrow, remembrance, and in this case, Scottish ancestry. George was a native of Kildunnan, Sutherlandshire, Scotland, and passed on August 20th, 1852, aged 53 years. His son Donald is also buried here, passing away on July 20th, 1851, aged 24 years. Not to be confused with his son, also named George Macbeth, who inherited much land from Thomas Talbot. They are two different people. And finally, we'll look at the Harris Stone. AF and AM-GRC. These initials stand for Ancient, Free, and Accepted Masons. And GRC is Grand Registry of Canada. Phoebe Ann died July 21st, 1863, aged 37 years, and William, six days later, leaving behind three young children. When Phoebe died, William was heartbroken. When he didn't return from a walk, concerned neighbors put up a search party and found him by a brook, most likely having died from exposure. William was the first postmaster at Elliottsville, which is now Iona. St. Stephen's Cemetery can be visited at 33105 Fingal Line. Colonel Malon Burwell, a devout Anglican, donated the land for this cemetery and church and was buried here along with his wife, Sarah. This rural location was known as Burwell's Corners as the family had a house, farm, and the land registry office on the northwest corner. All the buildings are gone now, unfortunately. Burwell was a member of the House of Assembly several times for the County of Middlesex and once for the Town of London, a lieutenant colonel in the War of 1812 and colonel during the Rebellion of 1837. He surveyed much of the area as far west as Essex and east to Haldeman at the behest of Colonel Thomas Talbot. Let's take a look at six interesting grave markers here, and we'll start with Burwell. Large flat stones held erect by columns. Conservation work was undertaken in 2014, and an interpretive sign about Burwell's participation in the War of 1812 was added. Malan Burwell was born in New Jersey on February 18, 1783, and died January 25, 1846, aged 62 years, 11 months, and 7 days. His parents were United Empire Loyalists, who moved to Upper Canada in 1796. His wife, Sarah Hahn, died August 25, 1870, aged 80 years, 9 months, and 2 days, and is buried beside Malin Burwell. Another interesting local family is the Bobier family. There's a large square black granite stone with pillared levels, and the bottom two are cement, steepled atop with an urn. Masonic symbols on the top of the west side. Mary, the wife of William Bobier, died July 13, 1913, aged 80 years. William F. Bobier lived from 1873 to 1949. William Bobier died September 29, 1894, aged 72 years, and was a native of County Wexford, Ireland. Also buried here are Annie M. Graham, wife of Harry Bobier, Thomas Sloan, and his wife Margaret Bobier. Nearby is the Braddon Stone. It's a small white limestone with floral design, in memory of Mary Isabella, daughter of John M. Braddon and Margaret R. Lunn, born August 29, 1881, and died December 15, 1882, aged one year, 
three months, and 16 days. Shown on the stone is this quote. Sweet cherub child, t'was well for thee to leave life's thorny path untold, and haste with vestures, yet all free from earthly taint, back to thy God. George and Hannah Waite owned the land and fisheries at the southwest corner of Lake Road and Iona Road. Also buried at this marker is their son George Waite and his wife Lodica Miller. George was injured while working at a sawmill. He lost his leg just above the knee. Little to no help was given to someone who had a workplace injury of this type at the time. The Cascaden Stone and their family has some interesting story to it. John Cascaden, MD, medical doctor, came from Donegal, Ireland, and lived in Southwold Township as a child, went to the University of Toronto, then England and Scotland for postgraduate work. He returned to Iona to practice medicine and became the Algon County Coroner and then the Member of Provincial Parliament. When he retired from politics, he moved to Dutton to continue his practice until his death. Also buried here is his wife, Hannah Catherine DeCow, and their son, David Arthur, who died in his fourth year. And finally, the Clark family stone. Nathan Clark was born September 15, 1883, in Southwold Township. His date of death is not marked on the stone, which I found very unusual. His wife, Margaret Joanne Keeler, also born in Southwold Township, died August 23, 1912, aged 74 years and two months. Rachel T. Clark, their fourth daughter, died August 10, 1884, aged 20 years, one month, and four days. If you know anything about Nathan Clark, and perhaps his death date or why it's not marked on the stone, please contact us at Bacchus Page House Museum so we can find out the answer to this mystery. You can find the Turconnell Cemetery at 28373 Lakeview Line, south of Wallacetown. This cemetery is located on land donated by Meredith Kahn, an important figure in the development of the Dunwich area. Opened in 1870, it was originally a burial ground for members of the Methodist Church that was located in the village of Turconnell from 1855 to 1926. This cemetery and the Anglican one down the road at St. Peter's are the final resting places of the pioneers that carved this township out of the virgin forest. The cemetery now operates under the patronage of the United Church of Canada. Although we have told you how the cemetery is full of pioneer families and their descendants, if you stand anywhere on the grounds and turn yourself around in a circle, you will read a great many family names that have no connection to the Anglo-Saxon, Scottish, and Irish that made up those first immigrants to this area. The region continues to attract new residents from around the world, and many have chosen this peaceful corner of Dutton Dunwich as their final resting place. But let's look at six interesting grave markers. First is Eliza Bobier. This fine headstone has a motif of a hand holding a book. Some interpret this as a hand holding a Bible to demonstrate the piousness of the deceased. Tradition says that this motif is a hand holding the book of good deeds to be read out on the day of judgment. This design was often used for an individual that was giving and compassionate in life. There's one showing a handshake. Unfortunately, the stone is almost unreadable, but it still clearly shows two hands clasped in a handshake. This design is said to demonstrate our connection to the afterlife. It can be taken as either to be saying goodbye to the deceased or the dearly departed, saying hello to us in greeting upon our own death. George Crane is also buried here. It's a gray stone marker resembling a tree trunk with an axe wedged into the base. This unique headstone signifies the pioneering heritage of this man and his family. Settlers who first came to the area were required to clear all of the land they were granted. This enormous task was accomplished with the only tool available to them, an axe. Also a gray stone tree trunk with ferns at the base is the Page family stone. This family marker indicates the pioneering spirit of the Page family. Page is still a well-represented name in Turconnell, as you know from the Bacchus Page House Museum name. This family headstone bears the names, birth, and death dates of many prominent citizens of their time, some Page by birth and others by marriage. Many of the marriages brought together other well-known families, and the stone bears witness to that with names like Braddon among them. We'll have a look at Howard Church's grave marker. A lamb atop a stone usually signifies a child lies buried beneath, and tragically, this is the case here. 
Every Pioneer Cemetery includes many graves of young children, sometimes whole families buried in a row, all victims of diseases that were largely helpless to combat. The lamb signifies the child's innocence and purity, a lamb of God. And finally, Sherman G. Walters, a gray sandstone plinth with ivy around it and an urn on top. Sadly, another grave of a child. Sherman died on October 7, 1889, at the tender age of six years, three months. The urn on top is a symbol of death and the return of the physical body to dust, while the evergreen ivy signifies that the soul is everlasting immortality. I hope you've enjoyed part three of A Grave Situation, whether you chose to listen or to visit the cemetery using our podcast as an audio guide. I hope you found all of the stones that we talked about. Again, thank you to the entire Municipal Heritage Committee for their work on this project and their ongoing heritage work. I so enjoy working with each and every one of you. Please return in two weeks for our next podcast episode. Please share the podcast with your friends and follow us on all social media platforms at Bacchus Page House. The Bacchus Page House Museum and Turconnell Heritage Society acknowledges the land we are on today as the traditional territory of First Nations people. As settlers at a settler-focused museum, we value both the significant historical and contemporary contributions of all original peoples and ask how we can be supportive in Indigenous cultural renewal. Life in the Talbot Settlement is a production of Turconnell Heritage Society, operators of Bacchus Page House Museum. Your host has been Angela Bobier. Music provided by Jack Whitmer. And thanks to our producer, Caitlin Reitzma. To make a charitable donation, become a Turconnell Heritage Society member, and to contact the Bacchus Page House Museum, please visit our website, www.bacchuspagehouse.ca. Thank you again for listening.